Hello. In this video, I wanted to touch upon some confusing things about the background that you choose. So if you choose the background that's transparent, I think it could be really good for uh, certain things, probably for organ organizing certain work. But sometimes if you're doing something like an animation, uh, using a background color of all the same pixels could be incredibly helpful. But I'll also show you something that can be uh, helpful instead of using the transparent background. So let me show you. So I'm going to use a white background. Um, <laughs> and just to tell you, they do say that like using a white, ba using a white background could kind of like be a bit of work on your uh, eyes. So right now we have the background layer. When we uh, chose a white background. It just made a new layer and uh, you don't want to edit that layer. You want to instead uh, You could left click that layer go to new and click new layer. I just added a layer. This is layer one. The reason why You want to make a new layer and not touch the background layer is because um, I'm drawing some pixels on layer one and I want to quickly delete it I'm just pressing the delete key on my keyboard and that clears the pixels on that layer but the thing is, if I was on the background layer and I drew some pixels and I cleared the layer, it's going to turn the background um, all black. So, yeah, don't touch that. Um, don't touch the background layer. If it helps you even more, I recommend there's a lock icon. Um, if you click it, it'll when you try to draw on it, it'll say background uh, layer background is locked. And that's great because you do not want to mess with that. I mean, you could always make another layer that's a background, I believe, but uh, for now, I'd stick to that. So now we're on layer one. I could draw pixels. Great, great, great. But now I want to clear that layer and I could clear it with the delete key. Another interesting thing here is uh, when there's nothing on the layer, if you look at the icon right here, there's like a circle. Um, we're on it right now. There's Since there's nothing drawn, it's showing like an empty circle, kind of like an empty canvas. Um, the second we draw a pixel on there, it's showing, it's filling in that circle and it's saying there is something drawn on that canvas. Um, if you, ah, I forget the key, but okay, one other thing. So if you're pressing the control key and you kind of move it up, you could see like the pixel distances here um, from the sides. I, I'm basically using a 32 by 32 pixel grid. It is beneficial to see that, but I also want to show you, you can't be on the pixel, you have to be like around the pixel to show the uh, grid area, but you know, the second you either click it or, uh, well, it shows it there, but basically you kind of want to be near it. Basically, wherever you kind of point to, well, not where you point to, but it'll show you the areas away from uh, other areas. It could be helpful here to actually enable um, the grid. If you go to grid, grid settings, um, X zero and X and Y zero, that's just the starting point of the grid. Um, if you're familiar with like a Cartesian plane in math, um, you keep it zero, zero. That's just like the starting point for where the grid will start. You could define it some other area, but the other important thing here is the width and the height. Because it's saying 16 and 16 here, um, the grid out outline will only show when the pixel is, uh, it'll be like each each grid item in the grid will be 16 pixels wide by 16 pixels tall or height. So I'm gonna change that to one and one because that'll make each uh, box on the grid one by one pixels. So it'll show 32 of these uh, grid areas. So here, look, we have the grid. And, um, oops, sorry, I'm actually on the, I was on the background layer. Um, oops. So now we are on this layer and we are on our layer one, not the background layer. We're on layer one, we're with our pixels and we see the grid. Um, I think having a grid is really important. I could be wrong here and maybe I'll even prove myself wrong in the future as I go. But I do find these tips a bit helpful. Um, it's something that, that I kind of had a bit of uh, confusion with. I mean, you know, the more you use Asaprite, the more you'll learn. Um, you know, nothing will, no, nothing beats spending hours, um, you know, learning the software that you'll be using forever, <laughs> if that's one way to say it. Um, but yeah, 
Yeah, this grid. I do like this grid. The other thing is, in general, like if you are making assets of any type, um, you could always use the preview window to see what it'll actually look like. Um, I, I'm, this may not be the proper distance. I can't remember the exact distance I set for it. It may be what it would look like, like realistically, um, you know, considering a pixel. I could be wrong here. I may have to like, <laughs> I have to try to remember the settings for the preview grid. But in general, um, if you are doing something, drawing something, um, exporting it and seeing what it'll look like or wherever you want to put it will be the best way to uh, view it because if you are working on something, the whole point of the preview window is to try to get an idea for what it'll look like in however you try to export it, depending on the size that you want to work with for that. But yeah, I really do, um, I really do like the way I have everything uh, set up here. You know, I feel like the grid isn't annoying enough. I feel like when I had the background being uh, the two colors of the alternating grays, I think that that was a bit too distracting. I think if you're working with without a grid, I think you can do that. Um, I, I guess maybe it's more of a preference, but like I said, the grid is not showing on the preview window, which is, uh, I think that's a pretty cool way to work. And I feel like when you do this, when you have the grid, you could you could see where you want to put your next pixel. Because if you're not using a grid, uh, you may run into, I mean, not that you may run into, but uh, it may be a bit difficult to see where your next pixel is going to go. The other thing I wanted to mention, I have the pixel perfect setting off. Um, if you have that setting on, sometimes if you're drawing pixels uh, and you're going, so it, this was an interesting thing. I was drawing a line here. Um, I was drawing a line and I was drawing a line here and then I immediately, I drew for a second here, but I really meant to go here. Um, and basically it, the algorithm that Asperit is using for this was smart enough to ignore the pixel that I was gonna draw here when I really meant to just draw a pixel here and not there, so it won't do that. But if you turn off the pixel perfect setting, it will uh, not, it'll, It'll draw everything you uh, want to. So if you do it, even if you didn't mean to draw that, uh, that's why that's happening. So yeah, I hope this video helps you understand a little bit about uh, my preferences for now <laughs> when dealing with um, pixel art. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this video helps you. Bye.